I'd like to talk now about energy efficiency. We have the ratings for room air conditioners. We have energy efficiency ratings for residential buildings. <clears throat> and then we have heat pump efficiency ratings. And in all of these, we're going to use conversion factors. And this, these two are the same conversion factor, just reciprocal one or the other. And so this one I'm going to use a lot of, which is 1 BTU per hour. That's a rate of cooling or rate of heating is equivalent to 0 0.293 watts. Okay, so let's jump into it. So first is the energy efficiency ratio, EER, E -E -R, the acronym. It's defined as that cooling, rate of cooling, divided by the power input. It has units of BTU per hour. That's been the traditional way of the, um, um, describing or quanti quantifying rate of cooling divided by W dot, which is the rate at which you have to purchase the power input to it, electricity, watts. They have the air conditioning system will run under a controlled set of the conditions. So 35 degree outside, 27 inside with 50% relative humidity inside. And they find that typical room air conditioners can have an ear rating between 8 and 10. Maybe there's a, now more than 10, but between 8 and 10 will be their ear rating. Have you seen some guides like this, these little stickers? You want to buy some appliances? The EPA, the U.S. government, came out with this, and it's caught on. It's very popular. You see them, have seen them for many years now. And they have a standard template. So basically it's a federal prohibition to remove this tag unless you're the consumer and you bought the product. You know, if you're trying to sell the product, don't go and rip off all the tags, right? And this is your energy guide to help consumers make good choices. And over here, this is the box, the location where the manufacturer puts in the model number and some rating specifications. And then over here, it's a description like, okay, you, that's, there's a lot of people selling room air conditioners, multiple manufacturers at different sizes. Uh, this is some description. Oh, it's re with reverse cycle and it's with louvered sides. Okay. Down here is a visual image. If you don't like numbers, you like graphs and they're saying, hey, from the this is my yearly operating cost estimated. So if I bought a different model, I could probably spend as low as that much in energy cost to run this piece of equipment that I'm thinking of buying. Or if I bought the most efficient model out there, I'd probably be in this range from different competitors. But here's the one that I'm looking at right now. Kind of like MPG on your automobiles, right? Range of vehicle fuel economy. Here you have appliance fuel economies. This is for a window air conditioner. But right down here, they have the EAR as a number. The EAR energy efficiency ratio is 9.5 for this. Now they have a lot of qualifiers. You could spend some time, you know, it depends on your utility rate data and blah, 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 amount of use averaged over the United States. But there it is. All right. I have a room air conditioner with a rating of the ear of 9.5. What is the coefficient of performance? Here's multiple choice. You're going to need to know that the ear has these units, BTU per hour per watt, and you're going to need this energy conversion ratio of 1 BTU per hour is 0.293 watt. The first person to get my attention and can answer this correct answer answer this question correctly, we'll be off the hook for the rest of the lecture. The EPA little yellow rating sticker on the appliance talks about ear. You spent the whole semester talking about COP. Yes, sir. A. A. He's good. So definitely these were kind of bogus down in here. You knew it was going to be lower. Right? There you go. So A it is. Then we move from window or room air conditioners to what we call residential air conditioners. Seer. It's a seasonal energy efficiency ratio. 
And what are they doing is they're averaging some temperature conditions so it's not always the extreme hot day. And they're trying to get better representation of what your actual energy use would be if you bought this type of system and installed it. So how many people know how big the air conditioning system is in the home that they have lived in or their parents own or a friend owns or they currently own themselves? How big is your house? How many square foot? And how big in tons do, is the air conditioning system for the home? One person? How big is your house? Um, so like you got about a four or five ton unit? Five ton? And how many square foot? 3,600. Ooh, okay, that's a pretty efficient home. Pretty big home, too. You probably have a pool. And you know, all these friends, and plus myself, <laughs> would like to go to a pool party at that nice house. <laughs> Sometimes I can't resist myself of an easy joke, right? All right, what did you have? Oh, okay, that's about right. Little, this sounds small, but that's okay. Uh, she's got about a 14, little under 1,500 square foot home with about a one and a half ton unit. So that sounds like it's a pretty efficient system. Pretty good windows, sealed up pretty good. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, stru it'll struggle in the summer. Yeah. Who else? Nobody else. Well, in a couple more years, when you purchase homes, you'll be in tune with this. All right. Did I tell you that this is the lecture too? that you will get you more questions. Some people come, they, they graduate, they go away, or they go home for vacation. They say, oh, what do you study? Oh, mechanical engineering. What do you study in mechanical engineering? And you list a bunch of topics. And some of the topics like that, right up there on the board, what is that? Laplace transforms. We'll get a big blank stare and maybe a jaw drop, like, oh. But then you're going to mention something like thermodynamics. What do you study there? Internal combustion. They'll grab on. I got a problem with my car. Help me with my car. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then, oh, but I didn't study air conditioning. I studied also air conditioning. They'll grab onto you. I got a problem with my house, my air conditioning in my house. Can you come over and help diagnose this for me? Or they'll say things like, I'm making a big purchase. My old air conditioning system's going out. Can you give me some advice? Because it's going to cost me thousands of dollars. This is serious business. Hasn't it already happened to some of us? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so you can buy the lower efficiency, lower number SEER, or you can buy higher efficiency, higher number SEER. And the SEER has, guess what, the same units as the EAR. It's how much BTU per hour of cooling per watt of electricity you got to buy. So here is a visual guide, EPA, with the DOE, you know, joint venture here. This company makes it. This is a central air conditioning system, cooling only, and it has a split system. We're going to talk about split system in a minute. Least efficient down here, most efficient over here. They're showing you the SEER number, 10. It's pretty low. This is old. 13 would be right here. This is a very high. It's going to cost you more money for the high efficiency systems. Uh, way back when, they used to sell lower SEER. I remember when my dad... He's paid extra money, and he bought a 10-seer split system for his house at San Antonio. That was a number of years ago. You can't buy a 10-seer anymore, but he paid more money for that high-efficiency unit. And over the years, the engineers have been doing great work in the air conditioning and moving up that energy efficiency. In 2015, federal law came in effect basically saying, if you live in the southeast region of the United States, you must have a 14-seer. That's the only ones legally they could sell you. Where is the Southeast region in the United States? Alabama, Arkansas, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Hawaii. Hawaii? <laughs> anyway, Kentucky, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, and us, and Virginia. Those states use a lot of air conditioning. That's why. Now, if you live in another place, it can still be a minimum of 13 seer. But, uh, and these rules and laws continue to change. So I don't know if 2018 has something new for us or not, or 2020 probably does. All right. Somebody says I have a SEER of 14. What is the COP for refrigeration for that system? 
Yes, sir. 4.1. This is the type of question you'll get asked. Last summer, the electric bill to run the air conditioning system was estimated to be $3,000. First of all, they usually don't meter only the air conditioning system. They meter the whole house, and you use electricity in a hot water heater. You use electricity in your lighting, maybe the stove, maybe the poo pump, maybe some other things, right? But somehow you're able to only get what was used to provide air conditioning, and it was only $3,000 over the whole year, the summer. Okay. What you had a sear of 13, and it's on its last leg, and you have to replace it. And uh, the, now you can buy a sear 18, and the salesman's saying, oh, this will save you money. Estimate the electric bill to run the AC for next summer if you do buy that sear of 18. This is a very good question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I've got the answer covered up, but I'm going to give you a second or two. There's the strategy, everything laid out. First one to answer it. 2200 there you go. So your savings is uh, about $800, $830 per year. You could do a simple payback. Uh, you know, again, this type of thing you will be asked a lot to do after you get your degree. But I've been asked a lot about things like this. Simple payback and efficiency units. Well, not only do we have to struggle through the summer, but every now and then we have a winter that we struggle through. And a lot of the northern part of the United States has a lot more winter. They have nine months of winter instead of nine months of summer sometimes. And they have the heating seasonal performance factor. What is that? You know, it has the same exact units. It's like a heat pump. You're providing Q dot into the warm dwelling to keep it warm, and you're having to pay for it, pay for the system to run. And so, Instead of being in watts per watts, it's in these BTU per hour. That's BTU per hour divided by watts, the units. You can take a look, U.S. government, don't remove the label, energy guide for the consumer. This is the who's making it, their model number and ratings. Over here is a general description of classification. Oh, it's a heat pump. It provides cooling and heating. Meaning, the same system in the summer provides cooling, same system in the winter provides heating. Heat pump. How many people live in a house or have lived in a house with heat pumps? One, two, that's it? Three, four, okay. Yeah, my daughter lives in one. I don't. That has a heat pump. That's nice. It runs. My dad has one, too. Okay, they're getting more and more common. They were more and more common in the northern middle part, let's say northern Texas, middle part of the United States, where they have more uh, winter. Here, we don't have enough winter. We still have a lot of electric resistive heating in San Antonio, which is, you don't want that if you're living north in, in, in the middle, let's say in Missouri. You don't want to have electric resistive heating in Missouri or lower Illinois or Kansas or something. It would just cost too much. Okay. So here, notice that they give you the rating, the sear for the summer. It's a 15 sear, pretty decent. And they give you the heating seasonal performance factor of 8.2, how it's performing compared to others in the winter. Because this system works both. All right, question. If the heat pump has a HSPF of 8.2, what is the COP? Nope. Did you already do it? Did, are you out for the day? No. Okay. Do you want my attention? You want to give me the answer? <laughs> Two significant digits. Bingo. You're done for the day. Congratulations. And notice that we use this conversion factor again and again and again for both the ear, the sear, and this heat pump performance factor, heating seasonal performance factor. So there you go. Those are very common. This is not really in the textbook, but this is what you'll be confronted with when you leave this class and graduate, right? Right.